So I bought a new bike, my own personal bike. So today is new bike day. Let me show you all around. It's a 2022 Trek Rail 9.8 XT. And it's in the brand new Project One Viper Red colorway. It's a full 29er with a big 750 watt hour battery. It's got the brand new Bosch smart system and it's powered by the Bosch Generation 4 motor. This build is the Shimano XT version, so it comes with Shimano drivetrain and Shimano brakes. But first of all, I think I'm going to weigh it. A lot of people are really interested in bike weights. Now this one comes with the new Bosch Smart System and a 750 watt hour battery, which is massive. So I'm thinking it's going to add quite a bit of weight to the bike. So first thing, let's get it in the scales and check out how much this bad boy weighs. 23.5 kilos. I'm quite impressed with that considering it's got the massive 750 watt hour battery. That's with the little mud guard on the front and the bottle cage. Yeah, 23.5 kilos, set up tubeless, 9.8 XT in size large. Actually downsized this year, I tested the XL version of this, which was fine for my height. I'm six foot three, which is like 190-ish centimeters. The XL is pretty massive. The reach on it is 517 mil. So it was really stable and super planted but I felt to get round the super tight twisty corners, I had to get really, really far forward over the bars. So for the first time in forever, I've downsized. This is the large. It's still quite long, but I'm gonna be more balanced on the bike. I'm not gonna be so rearward biased. So I don't have to put as much body language in to get my weight centered on the bike for corners, berms, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, large bike. So I've got to be honest with you, I'm not massively sold on the colorway for this year's Trek models, the 2022 Bosch Smarts. I personally prefer solid colorways, uh, so a single color with a nice matte finish maybe. Hopefully it'll grow on me, but let me know what you think. So let's get it in the stand and take a look around it. It is the 9.8 XT, so XT build, 2929. It's got Bontrager parts on it, the wheels and that kind of stuff, and the tires and the finishing kit, but XT drivetrain and XT brakes, but I'll pop it in the stand and show you around. I probably should mention actually that it's advertised as coming with a 170 dropper. This one came with a 150 dropper, which is way too small for me, especially as I'm downsizing, so need more of a drop. And I've noticed that with a lot of bikes actually. I don't know if there's a shortage of like OEM dropper posts, but loads of bikes are coming with smaller droppers and advertised. So I bought this bike yoke uh, Revive. It's 213 mil in drop and it matches the fat seat tube. Build quality seems really good. And it's got this thick fat stanchion on it. So hopefully it's nice and stiff. So let's take an in-depth look around the bike. So Shimano XT brakes, this is a 203 mil Shimano XT rotor and the XT caliper in that nice kind of chrome. I like that. But the XT brakes are really decent, powerful stoppers. Here's the lever. I like the fact that they've got a kind of small throw and the bite point is quite nice. Once you get to the bite point, there's not a huge amount of uh, movement or squish after that. And I kind of like that hard bite point. I find it easy to modulate those. Some brakes, you hit the bite point and then they kind of squish down a little bit further and it seems like there's air in the system, but even after a good bleed, some of them can still do it. So I like the XT, the feeling of it. They're easy to bleed the lever, just got a little bleed screw on there and really easy to work with as well. So this is a Bike Yoke Revive dropper lever. It's called the Triggy. It's got lovely action to it. It's really smooth. I think it's got ball bearings in there. It's really nice. And the massive Bosch Gen 4 Smart Controller that looks like the Starship Enterprise when it's starting up. And it's got these horrible looking LEDs. I, I don't like it. You've watched my videos before, maybe you've seen. Yeah, they could have done much better with that. Oh well. Carbon bars. XT brake on the right hand side, front brake. So again, XT, really nice shifting action. And you can use this with your index finger or your thumb, and you've got the double shift with your thumb, the double down shift. Massive fat head tube on these. These are like the e-bike forks and they're 1.8 inch. 
and it just retains all of the proportions of the bike. So if I step back here, everything looks well designed and well proportioned. Some are still running skinny head tubes and really thin droppers. Whereas here you can see it's really fat, 34.9. It all looks oversized, but it doesn't look out of place, any of it. 30 mil of spacers, I've just set it up like that. I've not actually ridden the bike yet. Here's the screen, it's pretty chunky. It does stick out a lot, but the display on it is actually really good. It's really quick, smooth, snappy. Uh, so yeah, and you can actually run it without the screen. Just pull it down and take it off. Although it kind of leaves all these out and I don't think that looks particularly great. So I'll just probably run it with the screen in all of the time, but it's super easy to remove. So the wheels are the Bontrager Line Comp 30. It's more of a budget wheel, but they seem pretty decent quality. I am gonna pop some DT Swiss rims on there. I've been using DT for ages, as will the tires. These are not bad, but they're not the stickiest. They've got quite a hard or hardish rubber compound, not great for the UK uh, winters. Little key port there to remove the battery. Super easy on the track. Just pop the key in and the battery ejects from the other side. So Bosch Gen 4 motor, this is such a little powerhouse. It's brilliant. It's so strong. My favorite motor on the market at the moment. Uh, there's a couple of things that I think could be better. Hear that? The ratchet, you do get used to that, but when I first rode it, I was like, that sounds horrible. And actually there's a little bit of play. There's about 50 engagement points, but you do have a little bit of play. Actually, one of the side benefits of this is you don't get as much pedal kickback because there's uh, a bit of play in the systems, similar to things like the O-Chain devices, just reduces pedal kickback. So yeah, side benefit. Charging flap, just under there. So the charger goes. Rock Shocks Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock. Uh, this is a Trek through shaft Ultimate which just has a real simple way of changing the low speed compression. There's three settings, like an open, mid and like pedal platform. It's got a flip chip in here so you can run it in the low or high setting. I've got it in the low setting at the moment. I'll probably try the high setting. Just raises the bottom bracket a little bit and it steepens the seat tube, but it's gonna steepen out the head angle as well. But it's good to test. If you live in an area with loads of rocks and loads of chunky climby bits, you might like to put it in the high position just to avoid pedal strikes. Head over to the back, Shimano XT203 rear rotor, rear disc, and XT caliper, and the Shimano. These can be a little bit noisy actually, these Shimano pads, so I might swap those out for some Galfa pads. So let's turn the bike round, see from the other side. I want to show you something. Do you reckon it's gonna work? 170 Fox Factory 38. I think they're gonna go on there. Subscribe, because I'm gonna do another video where I'm changing out a few bits and I'll go through each change and explain why I've made that change. So the other side's like a gold color, but this is like a, just a pure red there, neon red, and then like a foil color, like a metallic color. You might just be able to make that out. Looks pretty cool. So 29er on the rear with the same tire, the SE5. Oh, by the way, the spec sheet said it'll have an SE6 at the front, which it doesn't. Has an SE5 front and rear. XT cassette, so 11 on the smallest and 51 on the biggest tooth. So quite a wide range cassette. XT rear mech, and oh, I should mention that the shifting on this Hyperglide, Hyperglide Plus on Shimano is brilliant. You can almost shift under full power. I like try not to because don't want to break chains, but the shifting performance of it is so, so good. Even though it's cable actuated, cable operated, I really love the shifting performance and how it feels to shift on an e-bike. E13 front sprocket, I think it's a 34 tooth and 165 E13 crank arm. 29er wheel at the front with a Zeb Select Plus. Now you can upgrade these to an Ultimate just with a uh, damper upgrade. And it's still got the fat crown, like the e-bike crown. So it looks really beefy and burly. So we'll just take the battery out, uses this key. The key in here. I'll just go around here so it doesn't fall out. But this is, although I really dislike keys on e-bikes, I wish it was just an Allen 
a quarter turn Allen bolt. There you go, pops out, super easy. And it's got a little handle on it and even I'm holding the camera with the other hand. So it's just one handed operation to remove it. So it's a pretty neat design. So that's a quick look around the bike. Let me explain to you why I picked this Trek Rail as my own personal bike. So I do get a lot of questions every single week on bike recommendations, which is cool. I like helping people out. A lot of people, many, many people ask me if it was my own money, what would I buy? Well, this is what I bought with my own money. Uh, I bought it from an independent bike shop, Blazing Bikes. I'll pop the link to them in the description. A lot of people say that you shouldn't buy a bike based on the motor system. Hmm, I'm not so sure. The motor system really can change the character of how an e-bike behaves. So in my experience of testing them all, they're all getting really, really good. And the integration is getting better and better every single year. But for me, the new Bosch Smart System ticked a few of those boxes. Firstly, the motor performance is phenomenally good. It is really torquey, really punchy, and just continues giving assistance right up until the cutoff limit. So some motors make torque low down and that's where they deliver a lot of their speed, but they can get a little bit weaker when you're really demanding the power. So let's say you're on a really steep hill, low down, and at lower cadences, they all give loads of power. But it seems to me in my testing that the Bosch just continues delivering that power right to the cutoff limit, and I think it's brilliant. I also really like the EMTB mode and the Tor Plus mode. They just feel like a very natural extension of your own leg power. It maybe is not the most natural feeling motor. I think the Bros on the Levos and Canevos wins there. That is really natural. But I quite like the feeling that the Bosch offers. I think it gives you that real kick and assistance when you need it. Like when you're going over roots and rocks, it's got this kick down mode, extended boost or something, I think it's called. And you can kind of give it a kick and it will carry on propelling you forward. So the Bosch motor performance is really decent. And the battery at 750 watt hours really is, yeah, it's 20% more ride time than the last one. So on those really big days out, you know, spring, summer's come in where it's light from 7 a.m. in the morning till 10 p.m. And if you just want an all day epic, the 750 is really the battery that's gonna do it. And I know some systems allow you to put range extenders on, but I really have had those in the past and I, I just find them extra hassle when you've got to think about carrying multiple batteries. So for me, one size, 750, do it all, it's in the bike, it's, it's done. You don't have to worry about anything else other than just charging the one battery. There's a couple of downsides to the Bosch. If you see my videos, you know, I'm not a fan of like the key system, the screen and the chunky remote. I think they just need to be made better. I think the design choices on those is, is not fantastic. So hopefully we'll see some updates in the future. So I wanted to get a bike with a Bosch motor system. So it kind of narrows down the field a little bit. I also wanted a 29er. Now a lot of bikes are going mullet and they're great. Mullet has lots of benefits. But for me being tall at six foot three, 190 centimeters, the rollover speed on a 2929 just beats the benefits of a mullet. The mullet, the chainstays can get a little bit shorter and you get the lower inertia from that rear wheel. But I don't really like super short chainstays. I like to feel balanced because when a bike grows out the front, if you've got a really short chainstay, your weight is rearward biased and you have to really put a lot of body language in to getting your weight forward. So super short chainstays, not for me. If you're a taller rider, maybe you'll appreciate a longer chainstay. I think if you're centered on the bike, your balance point, you've got equal weight on the front and the rear tire and you can just use your body language to lean the bike over rather than getting your weight really far forward. So yeah, I wanted a 2929. So we've got Bosch motor, 2929. It really narrows down the field quite a lot. And Trek had already sent me one of the new bikes to demo. I made a video on it and I was like, I really like this bike. I liked it so much, I thought I'm just gonna buy one. I thought it ticks the boxes for me. It's 2929, it's got the Bosch motor. I like the rail, the way it rides, the geometry is good. And there's a few more benefits that I think I should share with you. Because of the way the shock is mounted, you can actually overstroke the rear shock. So stock, it comes with 160 fork and 150 rear travel, but you can actually fit a shock with a longer stroke. So effectively, it doesn't change the geometry, but the rear wheel travels further, so you get more rear wheel travel. So I've got an Olin's coil, 
and it gives it 163 millimeters of rear travel. And I'm gonna put a fork on that Fox factory fork. So it's 170 at the front. So it really takes it to a, a slash, an electric slash, a full on enduro bike, which will really help in the Alps. When I rode in the Alps last year, I took a bike with 150 travel and 160 on the front and it was good, but I just wished it had a little bit more. So I'm gonna build a bike that does that. It's gonna be a full on electric enduro trek rail and I cannot wait to get it built. So I'm a big believer in long travel e-bikes. I think that if you've got a nice slack head angle, long travel, and the geometry is pretty modern that they just make sense. You've got the motor to assist you. So I'm gonna create a long travel electric enduro bike with a big battery based on the Trek Rail 9.8. Another 170 fork, 165 rear travel, uh, some other components on there as well. If you wanna be the first to see that, make sure you're subscribed because it's coming out soon. And thanks for watching, catch you soon.